Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Make sure that you're snuggly and warm in your bed, that everything is just right in your room. That way you can get comfy, let go of your day and relax your body so that hopefully and eventually you'll fall fast asleep as you listen to the story. Heidi, Cherry, Vea were all hanging out on their back garden. They'd invited over Tucker and Leo, and also their friend Diana was there. Diana had made Cherry get the radio out. She loved the radio. Not too long ago, Cherry found this really old, cranky-looking radio in Grandpa's greenhouse. She'd been playing on the garden with Heidi and Vea, and they'd found a radio in the greenhouse. It looked like something from 10 million years ago. It wasn't until Mum had explained that you have to wind it up, you have to crank it up, and it's actually a radio that they played with it and they loved it and they introduced it to Diana. Diana loved the radio. And once again, since Diana was there playing with them on the back garden, she'd asked Cherry if they could play with the radio. Cherry had put it down on the blanket. There was three giant, big, big blankets on the back garden. The cats and the dogs were laid on them, along with Diana. They'd been playing all sorts of different garden games. They'd been playing soccer. They'd done some exercising. They'd done some gymnastics. Well, attempted to do cartwheels, which was very funny. Tucker was all over the garden and kept falling into the plants. I don't like these cartwheels. These cartwheels, they're not made for these, my, my kind of legs. I think you wash, I think you need, well, maybe. Well, yes, yes, you definitely just need two legs, I think, and two arms like Diana, because she could probably do them so easily. I cannot do them easily because my legs all get twisted up and turned upside down and all c- crossed over each other. And then before you know it, I'm eating daffodils. <laughs> not, not fun. That's basically what Tucker had said after trying many times to do a cartwheel. Now, they were just laying out on the blankets, chilling out in the sunshine. They'd been listening to music on the radio. Diana had cranked it up. She'd turned the handle around and around and around and around until it wouldn't turn anymore. And then she changed the channel to a music channel. The music was like smooth jazz type music and they were all very chilled out the birds were singing the sun was shining it was the perfect kind of day diana twisted the knob on the radio and changed the channel news alert news alert cherry said omg diana listen leave it there what they're saying The gentleman carried on talking on the radio. News alert. Flash warning. Two peacocks have escaped from the local zoo. OMG, said Cherry. Diana said, oh, I like peacocks. Cherry said, shh, Diana, listen. Diana got quiet and listened to the man talking on the news flash. Be warned. These peacocks are escapees from the local zoo. Do not interact with the peacocks. If you see the peacocks, please notify the authorities ASAP. Beep! And then the warning went off the radio. Diana changed the knob again and it went back onto some calming piano music and she left it right there. Cherry said, OMG! OMG! Peacocks! Are peacocks dangerous? Diana said. No, they're nice. Cherry said. Diana, have you met a peacock? Diana said. Uh, 
Cherry, before she even had a chance to finish her sentence, said, See? Exactly. I bet peacocks bite your throat. I bet they bite your throat. I bet they attack you in the dark. Heidi said, They do no such thing. And anyway, peacocks can be very friendly. Oh, said Cherry. Just then, the sun completely changed to shade as if a big cloud had flown over the sun. Tucker looked up. Ooh, ooh, said Tucker. Leo said, what is it? Tucker said, ooh, 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 ooh. Cherry said, what are you looking at? She looked up at the sky. And just then, Two peacocks flew down and landed in Cherry, Heidi and Vea's back garden. Cherry swallowed. Oh, OMG! OMG! It's coming for me throat! Oh gosh! I think I... Oh no! I think I need to go to the toilet! Cherry pulled quickly behind Heidi and pushed Heidi in front of her. Heidi said, Thanks, Cherry. Cherry said, OMG, Heidi, you said they were nice. Heidi said, Hello. Hi there. One of the peacocks stepped forward. The peacock was enormous. Tall. It looked taller than what Heidi had assumed peacocks were like. She stepped back and almost tripped over Cherry. And Cherry said, Watch it. Heidi said, move back, move back. It's really big. The peacock, as it moved forward, said, Hello, my name's Lance. Diana, who was stood with Vea, said, Lance, I thought peacocks were girls. (laughs) She's the girl, he pointed with one of his wings behind him. There was a peacock stood behind him that was brown and grey and very pretty but didn't look anything like him. Why is she brown? said Diana. The she stepped forward. Hi, my name's Princess Peacock. Well, actually I'm a pea hen. Girls are pea hens, you know. And we don't have the blue, beautiful, green, beautiful feathers like he does. He's a peacock. He has the bestest looking feathers in the entire world. The female pea hen swooned as if she was madly in love with Lance the peacock. Lance the peacock fluffed out all of his feathers in the biggest biggest, most beautiful fan any of them had ever seen. The whole space in the garden seemed to swoosh, as if his magical, magnificent presence had just swooned all of them. Oh, wow, said Vaya. You really do have beautiful feathers. The female pea hen, Princess Pea Hen, she was called, fluffed out all of her brown feathers and they were glorious, but they were just brown. Blue is my favourite colour, said Diana. I like rainbow colours as well. Well then you will love all of my feathers, said Lance the peacock. He stepped forward towards Diana and Diana, liking peacocks, wasn't afraid at all. She was being very brave. We just heard on the radio that you guys escaped. You escaped the zoo, said Diana. Oh, MJ, yeah, you did. Is it you two? Is it you two that escaped the zoo? All of a sudden, Lance didn't say anything and let out the most loudest, loudest trump. He tooted. <coughs> and never said a word about the toot and carried on talking. Heidi giggled a little bit. 
And then Cherry pushed Heidi in the back and said, Did he just toot? He just did a really loud toot. Did you hear that? <gasps> What's that smell? Oh, what is it? Diana said, It smells like lavender. I have lavender when I have a bath. It smells just like that. Lance the peacock explained that they'd broken out to the zoo and then he tooted really loud again <coughs> and acted like nothing had happened. Princess Peahen smiled at everyone. She noticed that they'd noticed that he was tooting. And then she started giggling on his third toot. <coughs> he turned round and said, What are you giggling at? She said, You're tooting. Lance said, Yes, that's what got us out of there. Cherry said, Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. You're telling me that you guys tooted your way out of the zoo? Princess Peahen explained. Yes, well, what we did was, we can fly, you know. Peacocks can fly. But we don't really like to fly that often, to be honest with you. We only fly about 2% of the time. The rest of the time, we just kind of like to walk. But we knew we needed to get out of there. We needed to get out of there because they were keeping us separate. And me and Lance, well, we're kind of in love. We've been in love for a very long time. And we like to be together. And they don't like us to be together. They like to keep me on one side of the zoo that's not very busy. Because, obviously, I'm not blue and green and glorious like Lance. She looked at him once again, all swoony, like he was the best thing in the world. And also then, Lance is on the other side of the zoo and he is in the main entrance area and everyone obviously comes to see Lance because he's so, so handsome. Lance swooned out all of his feathers once again like a big giant fan and bowed almost as if to say, well, yes, I know, I can't help myself. Lance said, we'd had enough, we'd had enough. We needed to be together. We needed to get out of that place. That's why we escaped. But because we don't like to fly very much, like Princess Peahen said, just about 2% of the time, that uh, we saved up all of the Brussels sprouts that they'd been feeding us. We saved them all and we ate a week's supply of Brussels sprouts. Can't stop tooting, but by goodness, do they help you fly? They must do, said Cherry, because that zoo's about 10 miles away. Took her interrupted. Oh my golly goodness gracious me, I must say that your feathers are absolutely amazing. Really, really nice, aren't they, Leo? Leo, don't you wish that you had those feathers? Can I, uh, can I, can I, can, 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 can? Leo elbowed Tucker and said, don't you dare. Tucker said, I can't help it, Leo. I want to go lick him. I want to lick him and I want to sniff him and I want to make sure that they smell as good as they, they, they look because they look like giant blue popsicles. They look like popsicles, don't they? Diana, don't you think his feathers on his tail look like popsicles? Diana nodded. They did. They looked like beautiful, bright blue, bright green, pretty circular popsicles. See? Tucker said to Leo. I can't help it, Leo. Tucker stepped forward. Do you mind very much if I just have a little sniffity sniff? Lance tooted a really, really long toot. <coughs> oh my, said Tucker. He stepped back a little bit, but then got hit with the biggest whiff of lavender. Oh, actually, oh, it smells really nice. Is that what lavender smells like, Diana? Diana nodded. Why do your toots smell like lavender? My toots don't smell like lavender. Leo said, yes, I know that. Tucker said, they don't smell like lavender at all. They smell more like dog food. Maybe they smell sometimes like cabbage. Maybe like a bit like a, like a, like a rotten cabbage. One time, oh dear, one time, I ate all of Mr. Kitty's cat food and they smelt a bit like tuna. Yes, my toots smelt like tuna and I was like, Mr. Kitty's t toots must smell like tuna. And then I was like, oh my goodness gracious me, these t 
toots do smell absolutely delicious because I really like tuna. Leo elbowed Tucker to shut up. Lance puffed out his feathers once again and puffed out his peacock chest and said, Well, I don't know why, but my toots do smell like lavender. He looked over his shoulder towards Princess Peahen and said, What do your toots smell like, my love? Princess Peahen said, Um, I think they smell just like yours. Oh, glorious, said Lance. I knew there was one other reason why I loved you so much. The peacocks looked at each other as if they'd got love arts coming out of their eyeballs. Princess Peahen stepped forward and stood directly next to Lance. I hope you don't mind that we landed in your garden. It just looked like you guys were very nice, and it looked like you were having fun. What's that thing over there? Diana turned and looked to where Princess Peahen was looking. She was looking at the radio. Oh, that's one of my favourite things, said Diana. It's a radio, a really old radio, and you have to crank it and turn the handle and make it work, but when you when you play with it, it takes you to magical places. Jerry said, OMG, Diana, don't tell her. Diana said, oops, sorry. Well, also, the radio has a very, very magical thing also where you can have a dial on your belly button. And and when I turn that dial, sometimes if I'm in a, a funny mood and I don't want to be in that mood. Princess Peahen said, what kind of mood? Diana said, um, like upset. Princess Peahen said, oh, I get upset sometimes. What does the radio do when you're upset? Diana explained. Well, it doesn't do anything. It's just that I pretend I'm a radio and I turn my belly button and I pretend I turn it to the left or I turn it to the right and I tune into a a happy channel and then I'm not so upset because I'm on the happy channel and the happy channel makes me feel better. Princess Peahen said, Oh, wow. That's a really good idea. I get upset quite often. I get upset that I'm not supposed to be in the public because I'm just brown and grey. And Lance is allowed in the public because he is blue and green and absolutely wonderful. Princess Peahen looked at him again as if she was madly in love. Lance, on cue, swooned out all of his feathers just once again to show everyone how marvellous he was. Diana said, I really like blue, it's one of my favourite colours, but I also think that your feathers are very pretty. The brown and the grey is beautiful. Princess Peahen said, Oh, thanks so much. She fanned out all of her feathers and did a full spin for everyone. Vaya said, Well, you know, brown has never been my choice of colour either. I kind of like rainbow colours. I like pink. I love, love, love white. But, you know, you make brown look so chic. And I love the grey. I think the grey is very subtle. And it's very, very calming. So there. I would have never thought it, but I think your colours are lovely, Princess Peahen. Princess Peahen flushed in the cheeks. Oh, you guys are so nice, she said. I really would like to take another look at that radio if you don't mind, Diana. Diana said, Oh, okay. Cherry said, No, OMG, no, don't let her. What happens if we go somewhere like we did last time? Do you think these peacocks are going to be equipped to meet dinosaurs? OMG, no, they're not. It was too late, though, because Diana had walked over to Princess Peahen and she was showing her how you turn the dial on the radio to get to listen to different things. There's different channels. Some's music, some's story time, sometimes it's the news. It's really fun, said Diana. She turned the knob on the radio and it was a familiar voice. 
It was the old man that tells stories about dinosaurs. His voice was nice and smooth and calm, just like it was before. And Diane stopped and said, Oh, I really like this channel. He talks about dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs, don't you? Princess Peahen said, Well, I've never met one, but I would like to. Diana's eyes got really big. She put the radio down on the ground. Well, maybe you will, she said. Cherry said, OMG! Just then, the grass underneath them started to open up. It cracked at first, and then a big giant hole appeared in the ground. And then, Heidi, Cherry, Vea, Tucker, Leo, Diana, and Princess Peahen, and Lance the Peacock, all fell into the hole. It was like the whole garden lawn opened up. They were falling, and falling, and falling, deeper and deeper and deeper into the ground, the hole going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until bump. They all landed. Diana smiled, cheered, and clapped her hands. Yay! She knew because she'd been here before. Or it had happened before. She wasn't scared. Last time, she met one of her favorite dinosaurs. This time, where would they be? She looked around quickly. Princess Peahen and Lance the Peacock looked quite afraid. It's okay, said Diana. Don't worry. OMG! Cherry hit the ground with one of her paws. Darn it, not again! Oh, I don't like dinosaurs! Tucker said, Where are we? What just happened? Leo said, Oh, 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 no! He looked under his armpits. Hives. Instant hives. Oh no, where are we? What just happened? Leo was in a panic. Cherry said, oh, it's all right, Leo. Stick with me, don't worry. It's all right. Well, you know, last time this happened, right, we met this dinosaur. But it was a really nice dinosaur. Leo said, dinosaur? Tucker said, ooh, dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs. I bet they taste delicious. I've always wanted to lick a dinosaur. Leo said, seriously, Tucker, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs eat things like us. Heidi said, well, actually, last time they didn't eat us. It was fine. So maybe we'll be all right. Everyone was looking around. They found themselves in what looked like an outside kitchen. From where they'd all landed, it didn't look like anybody or any dinosaurs or anything else was around there. But they could smell cooking. It smelt like a cake baking in the oven. Oh, that smells nice, said Diana. Oh, yes, it does. It smells delicious, said Freya. They all followed their noses and walked around this big building until they got to another side of the kitchen. There in the kitchen was a dinosaur. A very, very big dinosaur. With tiny little arms. Oh, said Diana. It's a T-Rex. Awesome. Uh, said Cherry. T-Rexes? A T-Rex? A T-Rex? Oh, and Jay, look at his blooming teeth. Cherry tooted. <coughs> oh, said Lance. So I'm not the only one. Oh, Lance, look, mate, give me a break. Whenever I'm nervous, I toot. I can't help myself. That's what normally happens, you know, when you get scared. You toot a bit. You don't toot to fly like you did. You toot when you're a bit nervous. Oh, and Jay, that T-Rex is going to eat us. Look at its teeth. They're absolutely enormous. Tucker got behind Cherry and said, Oh, I don't think I'll be licking that dinosaur. His teeth look very, very, very sharp. The dinosaur heard the commotion 
welcome to my kitchen, said the dinosaur. Leo said, well, he doesn't sound too scary. He was scratching under his armpits. His hives were very itchy already. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my kitchen, said the dinosaur once again. What can I get you? Come on in, come on in. It's been the longest time since anyone stopped by and I love to cook. I love to experiment with my cooking. I love to do science experiments with my cooking. Is anyone prepared to eat a Brussels sprout cake? Because that's what I'm making right now. Oh, said Lance. I do like a Brussels sprout. Cherry said, OMG, Lance, don't eat any more Brussels sprouts. I mean, okay, your toots smell like lavender. That's very refreshing and all, because everybody else's toots don't tend to smell that nice. But you know what I mean? Like, if you eat that cake, you might fly off again. Lance said, oh yeah, yeah, good point. I'd like to stay grounded for this time being, since I've got no clue where I am. T-Rex, the dinosaur carried on talking about his Brussels sprout cake. Well, I've tried so many different types and so many different flavours. And so far, the carrots work really well. Carrot cake, have you guys ever heard of carrot cake? Everyone looked at each other as if to say, of course we have. We've eaten carrot cake. We've heard of carrot cake. Do you think you've invented it? I don't think so. Tucker said, carrot cake? Of course we've heard of carrot cake. Carrot cake's absolutely delicious. It's yummy. One time, you know, one time I went over to my friend's house and his mum had just baked a carrot cake and I was like, ooh, that smells so nice. And the frosting, the lovely creamy cheesy frosting on it. T-Rex interrupted and said, They put cream cheese frosting on it? Tucker said, Yes, yes, of course. That's what carrot cake is. It's carroty cake with all nice and warm and spicy spices. And, and then they put and, and then they put icing on it. Like a creamy cheesy icing. And it tastes so creamy and delicious. And oh yes, and cheesy. T-Rex said, mine didn't have that at all. Oh my goodness. I need to get back into the kitchen and do some more scientific testing. Anyway. This one's Brussels sprout flavour and it's delicious. Take a seat. There was like a long breakfast bar and it had little kitchen stools all lined up in front of it as if he was waiting for guests to come and taste his Brussels sprout cake. Diana said, You know, to be honest, it doesn't sound very nice. But I have been really good lately and I'm eating a lot more growing foods versus just sweets. So maybe it's nice. The T-Rex said, That's the attitude. Give it a try. You know, you have to experiment. You have to try things. You have to make different things. Otherwise, everything's boring and everything tastes the same. So let me get my Brussels sprout cake out of the oven. Get yourselves comfortable and we'll be off with a scientific experiment. Stravaganza, said T-Rex. Tucker looked at Leo and said, This dinosaur does not act like any dinosaur I have ever, ever thought of meeting or even heard of. Leo said, No, no he doesn't, does he? But I do like the smell of the cake. Tucker said, you like to smell a Brussels sprout cake? Leo said, yeah, I actually do. Is that weird? Tucker said, yes, that's very weird. Everyone sat down on a stool at the breakfast bar and waited. T-Rex and his tiny little arms managed to plate out a piece of cake for everyone. It looked pretty gross. It had chunks of Brussels sprouts in it. Didn't look appealing at all. Diana, being very brave and liking food and trying different things and experimenting, well, she actually liked scientific experiments, but this was pretty similar, she thought. She put the fork into her piece of cake, brought it up to her mouth, put it into her mouth, 
while everyone else watched. She chewed it around a few times and didn't pull any kind of facial expression. No clue whatsoever of whether it tasted gross or whether it tasted delicious. Everyone was completely enthralled, quietly watching her face. And then Diana swallowed and put her fork down and said, Don't eat it! out of one of the corners of her mouth. Everyone was instantly scared. Oh, well, Jay, said Cherry. What we're going to do? It's a T-Rex and we don't like his cooking. Oh, gosh, I tell you, it's going to rip me throat out. She tooted again. <clears throat> a toot smelt like tuna. Took us a there it is. There's those tuna toots. I like those tuna toots, Cherry. I really do like them. They do smell nice because, I mean, it smells like tuna cat food. <laughs> Who the fuck it? Cherry elbowed Tucker. Now is not the time, Tucker. This T-Rex is going to eat us if we don't eat his cake. Diana looked at everyone, did the biggest smile at the T-Rex and said, It's delicious. The T-Rex puffed up his chest. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, that makes me so happy. Because who's going to taste me cakes when I make them? Oh, I'm so pleased. The T-Rex instantly started to eat his piece of cake. He put the whole piece in his mouth, being so big and all, chewed around a few times and then pulled a gross face and spat it out all over the floor. It's awful! Diana couldn't help but laugh. She laughed a lot. And then everyone else started laughing because Diana's laugh was so contagious. They were all laughing. But then Cherry got scared again because T-Rex wasn't laughing. T-Rex looked very serious. And then Cherry tooted really, really, really long and loud this time. <laughs> said Cherry. She didn't know what to say. She was just really scared. T-Rex then looked at Diana laughing and started laughing. He laughed a lot and his laugh was like a roar and a laugh at the same time which thundered through all of them and the cat's fur and Tucker and Leo's fur all woofed and moved around as if a gust of wind had just blown by. It almost blew them all off the chairs. Diana's hair stood up on end because the gust of wind hit her from a funny angle and then Cherry looked at her with her hair standing on end and couldn't help laughing and she started laughing so much that she tooted again and then Diana said, Cherry, stop tooting. And then Lance tooted because he actually liked the Brussels sprout cake. He'd been eating it all along. And when he tooted, he lifted up off the chair as if he was going to go up, up, up and fly away until Princess Peahen grabbed a hold of one of his legs and pulled him back down to the chair. Oh, I need to stop eating that. ASAP, he said. Princess Peahen said, Yes, please, don't eat any more. We need to be together. She smiled at him and they leaned in on each other and gave each other a little smile and a hug. T-Rex was still laughing very, very loud. Raw laughing. <laughs> and then he stopped laughing and said, I get it. It was a joke. Meaning that Diana saying the cake was delicious was a joke. Phew. She wiped her forehead as if to say, Thank goodness, this T-Rex has a sense of humour. Everyone hung out with the T-Rex for quite some time. He gave them a piece of his carrot cake, which was delicious, even though it was missing the cream cheese frosting. Tucker still ate it. And then he gave them a rainbow mousse that he'd made that had all different flavours of like a pudding texture mixed with a yogurt or mixed with a fluffy moussey thing, whatever it was. Apparently he'd blown air bubbles into it. That was part of his experiment. And it turned into a rainbow mousse. That was really nice. 
After a while, though, Diana showed Princess Peahen how to turn the dial again. And when they did, they went up, 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 and landed back in Heidi, Cherry, and Vea's garden, laid on the blankets as if they'd not been anywhere. Diana and Princess Peahen became the best of friends very quickly. They had so much in common. But Princess Peahen had to leave. She had to leave with the love of her life, Lance the Peacock. And Diana took this very hard. She wanted Princess Peahen to stay with her. She wanted Princess Peahen to just pay attention to her. She wanted Princess Peahen to be her best friend and soak all of her funness and love and attention all onto Diana because they got on so well. And everyone loves attention, including Diana. But when Princess Peahen had to leave, Diana was very, very upset. She was a little bit angry. Angry at the fact that she had to share Princess Peahen. But then, Heidi sat with her for a while and talked to her about turning her dial on her own personal radio. The button, the pretend button, on her belly button to a channel where she felt okay about sharing the attention. She felt okay about sharing Princess Peahen. She felt okay with sharing because the channel had a story about sharing and it was talking about the fact that it's okay to share and it's okay to not be the center of attention all the time because everyone needs a bit of that sometimes and if everyone needs a bit of that sometimes then the attention of whoever is giving it has to be shared which means if there's 10 people in the room you're not always going to be the one that gets all the attention because the nine other people have to get their part of the attention otherwise they would be sad and they would be upset Diana laid on her back looking up at the sky and the clouds and the sunshine and the birds and listened to the story with Heidi. And when it was over, she understood. She understood that she can't get all of the attention all of the time. And by then, it was really time for the two peacocks to fly off to somewhere else where they could be together all the time and not have to be in separate places in the zoo. They had to leave. They couldn't stay in Heidi, Cherry and Vea's garden. That wouldn't be very practical. They had to find a home for each other, a home where they would be safe and they could be happy together forever and ever. Everyone gave each other big, big hugs. And when it came to Diana getting a big, big special squeeze off Princess Peahen, she thoroughly enjoyed it. She felt all of the hug for as long as she could. And then she let her go to Lance the Peacock. And the two of them flew away. Eventually, Diana had to go home. Tucker and Leo had to go home. And Heidi, Cherry and Vea went inside to go to bed. They went upstairs and showered off their day, brushed their teeth, put on their comfortable pajamas They got into bed, their big, soft, comfortable cat bed. 
and fell fast asleep. The end. <laughs>